Hello and welcome once again to Anatomy and Physiology at Glen Oaks Community College. I'm Dr. Ren Hartung. Today I would like to go over the major bones of the human body using the skeleton here. We'll first go over the axial skeleton and then we'll go over the appendicular skeleton. The axial skeleton consists of bones of the head, bones of the spine, and bones of the thoracic cage. For the head, I'll go over some of the major bones. Um, this is the frontal bone, makes up your forehead. Right behind the frontal bone, there's two plates on either side, and they're called parietal bones. So this would be the right parietal bone. This would be the right temporal bone, which is just below the parietal bone. And it also has the, uh, the opening for your ear, which is called the external auditory meatus. So that's one of the ways to know temporal bone. And then back here below is the occipital bone. All of those are the major, easily seen outside bones of the skull. There's more bones of the skull inside, but we'll look at those later when we open up the skull. So again, that's the skull. Down here, and by the way, skull bones are the ones that are closest to the brain. Down here, the ones that are furthest from the brain are the facial bones. Some facial bones. Here's the left nasal bone and right nasal bone, the left maxilla, the right maxilla. The maxilla has your top teeth embedded in it. That's one of the ways to remember it. Left zygomatic bone, it's your cheekbone. Right zygomatic bone. This is the mandible. And that's about all the facial bones I want to go over in terms of major bones. So that's the skull. The spinal column, I'll turn him around. <clears throat> Spinal column has three major sections. Up here in the neck are the seven cervical vertebrae. Down here attached to the ribs are the 12 thoracic vertebrae. And then down here in the lumbar region, we have one, two, three, four, five, six lumbar vertebrae. Below the lumbar vertebrae, we have the sacrum, which is a few vertebrae that actually fuse together as you develop. So it makes up one large bone, again, from the fusion of a few um, vertebrae. So that's the sacrum. And then down here, we have a few bones um, that are not fused together, and they're called the coccyx. There's usually two or three bones down here not fused together, the coccyx. So that's the spine. Um, one other thing you should be able to do for the spine is to recognize if I give you an individual vertebrae you should be able to recognize from what part of the spine does that vertebrae come from this one in particular let me get my pointer it comes from the thoracic spine no I take that back this one's cervical this comes from the cervical spine and the way that you know that this is from the neck is these two transverse foramina or transverse foramen, the two holes on either side. All vertebrae have this big hole in the middle and they have a body and they have a spinous process and some other details that we'll talk about later. Um, but only the cervical vertebrae have these two holes on either side. So that's cervical vertebrae. <clears throat> the next one is thoracic vertebrae. One of the easiest ways to identify thoracic vertebrae if you hold it up so that the front of this thing faces you, what's that look like to you? Most people say it looks like a giraffe with these little points up here. So that's one of the ways to know th um, thoracic vertebrae. Look at what happens when I compare it to a lumbar vertebrae. The lumbar vertebrae is obviously larger. Just by that in itself, you might be able to distinguish lumbar from thoracic vertebrae. But look at this one head on as well. It doesn't look like a giraffe. It looks maybe more like a moose maybe. So anyway, be able to recognize cervical versus thoracic vertebrae versus lumbar vertebrae. If I put a vertebrae out on the bench, be able to tell me which region of the spine it comes from. The other two vertebrae that you have to be able to recognize all by themselves, this is the first one. And you'll notice this is the first cervical vertebrae, and it looks very different than the other regular cervical vertebrae. This one's called the atlas. It holds the skull. The skull rests atop the atlas. So that's how it got that name, kind of like 
the mythical atlas was holding up the world. This is holding up your head. Um, and it rests on the next vertebrae that you have to be able to recognize by itself. And again, this doesn't look like the other cervical vertebrae I showed you because it has a dens. It has this big thing pointing up. That big thing pointing up on top of that rests the atlas. So the atlas rests on the axis. And what it allows is for this kind of motion when you say no. Rotation of the head is what that's called. So ax atlas, excuse me, cervical vertebrae number one, and axis, cervical vertebrae number two. So those are all the vertebrae you need to be able to recognize. The other bone that you have to be able to recognize kind of by itself is this bone. It's called the hyoid bone. The hyoid bone is in the neck. Um, you can't see it in this skeleton right now because the mandible is in the way. But it's in your neck at the top of your larynx. And the way to recognize it by itself, if you look at it close, you can see these two. They almost look like little teeth coming up off of it. This is the plastic one. It's not a real one. Um, and I haven't seen these little teeth things on the real ones, but um, they are on these plastic ones, and that's usually what I put on the bench. So uh, my students often say it kind of looks like Dracula teeth. So that, again, is the hyoid bone. Getting back to the skeleton, um, let's talk about the thoracic cage. There are 12 ribs on each side, 12 ribs. The first seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The first seven are called true ribs. Eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12 are called false ribs. And you can kind of see under here, um, 10 and 11 are not only, excuse me, 11 and 12 are not only false ribs, but they're floating ribs because they don't connect to this cartilage. I'll show you um, why we call the first seven true ribs and then 8 through 12 false ribs in a little bit. The reason I can't show you on this skeleton is because the cartilage has been replaced by a cork and it hasn't been done anatomically correct. So I'll take a snippet out and show you on a different skeleton that does better. Okay, I wanted to show you um, the true ribs versus the false ribs on this skeleton. This is one of our newest skeletons, but it's very old. It was donated by a retired physician. Um, and it actually has the, the actual chondral cartilage, the cartilage that connects the ribs to the sternum. So you can see here, rib number one has cartilage connecting it directly to the sternum. Rib number two, cartilage direct, connecting directly to the sternum. Rib number three, again, cartilage directly to the sternum. Four, five, six, and all the way down to seven, we have cartilage that directly connects to the sternum coming from the rib. But look what happens at rib number eight the cartilage comes up and connects to the chondral cartilage of rib number seven. It does not connect directly to the sternum. So eight begins the false ribs. Nine does the same thing. It comes up and connects to eight and so on. And of course, 11 and 12 don't connect to the sternum at all. So they're floating ribs. So again, one through seven are true ribs. Eight through 12 are false ribs. 11 and 12 are false ribs and also floating ribs. And that's the story of true ribs and false ribs and floating ribs. Okay, from the ribs, let's go to the sternum. The sternum has three major parts. I'll start from the bottom. This is the xiphoid process. If you've taken CPR before as a class, you've been taught to be careful not to break the xiphoid process. <clears throat> it's a bone that hangs down off of the bottom of the sternum. This part above the xiphoid is called the body of the sternum. And if you're doing CPR, this is the part of the sternum you're supposed to be pushing on, the body of the sternum. There's a suture right here, and above that suture is the manubrium of the sternum. The top of the sternum is called the manubrium. And in the manubrium, we have this little notch up here, which is called the jugular notch. So jugular notch, manubrium, body of the sternum, xiphoid process. And that is pretty much the axial skeleton. Thanks for watching and the next video should be on the appendicular skeleton which is the arms and the legs.